Hello, beautiful souls. Thank you guys for joining me here and welcome to my table. I was wondering when I would see you again. I have missed you so much. Too much, in fact. So much that I had to sit down and get this collective reading going for you guys. I did start receiving messages for this message today, last night, actually. What started coming through was, this is not the end. You will love again. I am excited to get into this message. I do feel there is personal applicability. And as I'm meditating on that and examining my inner realm with this too, I'm starting to see that this is a human experience as all of this is really. We do go through cycles, ups and downs, where maybe we feel more in the grace of love and maybe at times less in the grace of love. So this is a message for those who are feeling that they may be out of the warmth that love provides. Do not give up. You will love again. You will be loved again. You are loved. Okay, I love you, my friends. Let's do it. So to start off, there's a few messages that came through here. And already I'm starting to see it come together with a couple of Oracle cards that have been pulled. We'll get into that and then start into the tarot as well. So interesting, I don't have any other message connected to the symbol that came through, but it means something to somebody, I'm sure. And feel free, you guys, to let me know how these do relate to you or to connect to your own personal situation and lives. I was shown a very ornate Catholic cross, and I don't have an affinity to Catholicism or to any Abrahamic religion personally, but that means something to somebody. The next thing that I was shown was this interesting machine is what it looked like, uh, um, but it was holding these three concentric rings, a ring within a ring within a ring, and they were all spinning in different directions. What I was, um, what I was shown about this or told about this is this is generating immense power. The number three was something that was very important about it too. Having that Catholic cross come through was trying to make connections to that. I understand, you know, God, Son, Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. Uh, mind, body, spirit is something that was coming through as well. There's something about the, the combination of these three energies coming together that's creating an immense amount of power. To me, it feels more... Oh, that's interesting. What I'm, what's coming through is like earth, earthly plane, the heavenly plane, but then ether above that. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I, that, that just, I don't know. That just came through. We'll see where that fits in here. Okay. Thank you, spirit. Um, the next thing that I was, the next thing that I was told was I lose control. I lose control. It's very frustrating feeling and uh, very kind of loud power behind this statement. Missing somebody. When I'm not around this person, I'm, I'm losing control of my own energy, feeling in such despair, sadness when this person isn't around or that they aren't around anymore. Um, being connected to the this is not the end, you'll love again, it does make me feel like there is love lost. And this feels for for some of you, for a lot of you, um, 67.3%. I'm not sure <laughs> how much how much of you this applies to. This feels like somebody who maybe has passed from this plane too. Um, but for others of you, this feels like a relationship that's ended in some way, a friendship, a romantic relationship, or even a falling out of family or lost pet. Um, so yes, I lose control, missing someone. Uh, the next thing I was told was when the world was young. So this was this was interesting. Um, I was told when the world was young and then what I was given was this tone and I can't even replicate it because it's just way too high frequency for the human voice to do. But it um, is that called a glissando where it scales up. So it really um, scaled up to a very, very high frequency pitch. And I'm asking, what is this? <laughs> what is this tone for? Um, I was told that it was for elegance. <laughs> so I said, okay, sounds good. I don't know if this is like angel singing, um, elegance is what's coming through. The next thing I was told was the truth. 
So from there, I did start pulling some Oracle cards. The Starseed Oracle is what Spirit wanted to work with today. So let's get into it. Double Mission is the first card that came through. Lightworker Starseed, serve the world by being you. So this card, this card reminds us that we are here with a double mission, a dual purpose. We are here to experience being human as one of the functions of being here. And the other is to be a light worker in the ways that we are called to be a light worker. So this card is asking us in what ways can we step more into that role of serving the community at large, being, being this light worker that we came here to be. This next card here, this is where I started seeing some connections and, and made me laugh. Um, Whale and Orca, Orca Elders, excuse me, share your song, Frequency of Sound, Diving Deep. And I was told to just read this straight from the book here, so I shall. So Whale and Orca Elders. The Whale and Orca Elders are benevolent cosmic beings here to anchor a frequency of love onto the planet, to harmonize it with their song. As they weave around the oceans, they do so much more than any of us know. Their physical presence affects Earth's magnetic field and their harmonics call us to wake up and remember our own soul's song. Looking into the eye of a whale is something you'll never forget. Whales see into your very being and in an instant, you're changed forever. They see beyond the physical, the woundings, the identity, the personality, the story. They see right into your soul. If you pull this card, you're being called to surrender to your deepest truth. <laughs> and share it with potency, to, to bow to who you truly are, to stretch your heart wide enough to hold it all, to leave your fears, doubts, and baggage at the door, to question any part of you that doesn't feel good enough. The whale and orca elders want you to give others the privilege of seeing who you truly are, and for you to see the same in other beings, to drop your hangups and personality flaws and get busy revealing the unique note your soul came here to sing. So when I read that part especially, I was like, ah, oh, you cheeky. I love this. We're already getting a little bit of humor in here. Allow the song that echoes in the four chambers of your heart to emanate in all four directions. Peel back the layers of suffering and pain and reveal to others your soul's true song. And endeavor to see the soul of all those you meet. How are you being called to share your soul's unique song? Cool. So that tone um, with elegance, I love coming back to that after reading that it heart song. OK, this is um, this is the tune, the tone that you you came here to sing. And this is elegance, elegant AF, because that's who you are. Right. This is this is bringing. A touch, <laughs> a drop of the divine into this earthly realm. So mm, that makes OK, seeing earth, earth, heaven and ether. There's something about ether that we haven't really touched on yet. OK, let's um, let's pull some more Oracle cards here and get a little bit further into the message. Um, Spirit, can we go a little bit further into this message here? Sacred space. This I am feeling this is connected to ether here. Having a sacred space. And this can be physically, having physically a sacred space, safe space, I almost said, somewhere that you're meditating, you know, if you have a sacred space in your home that you can go to to feel safe in nature, more so though, I'm getting the experience of a safe space in here. If you don't have a safe space that you have uh, to go to, I'm getting this call to recognize what that is, to take some time in meditation, to sit down and create one, to ask your soul to take you there to that place, your guides, angels, or to even fabricate a place where you feel pay, uh, peace and, and safety, okay? The combination of these three your experience here on the earthly realm, pulling your song in from the heavens and being able to tap into when needed this sacred space in the ether, this creates an immense amount of power. Okay, I'm seeing now. Okay, I see. Cool, okay. Um, I feel like we want one more here. Go a little bit deeper into this, please, spirit. What's the intention? Routine. I feel like there is, you're being asked to shake up your routine a little bit. 
not in an intense way. What, mm, what I'm getting is there's something that's a part of your routine that isn't adding benefit to you. I'm not saying like, you know, you have to have the perfect diet and this, all this has to be regimented. It's more um, like we all have those things we just mindlessly do and maybe we're not sure why we're doing them. Like maybe it is some of the things we eat or the things we watch, something that we consume in some way. You're being asked to question a little bit, get curious, there we go, to get curious about your routines. The frequency, what I'm seeing is, um, that's interesting, like an old, an old Roman lock and key system. You're so close to unlocking, like this key is your routine, the vibration you're producing with your current routine. And there's one more like pin that needs to be pushed up in order to open this door that, or this, whatever's locked, a chest, I'm not sure here. But this key that you need is created by changing something in your routine. Okay. Can we get a little more information on that, please, Spirit? The hawk and the bee. Lamb here at the bottom as well. So whatever this component is in the routine, this is a message that's been coming through for you for quite some time. It's not a loud message, though, is, is maybe why it's difficult to hear it. If or you may be trying to ignore it. This is a message that's coming through either your spiritual team directly from inside of you. You're hearing messages from children around you, um, signs in nature, animals, that sort of thing. These very quiet messages that we could miss if we're not tuned in to paying attention to those things. So Hawk coming through here, a request to see the bigger picture and to pay attention to the finer details here. Honing with finesse is what I'm hearing. With the bee coming through, this is a this is a card of community. So I'm drawn back to the whale and orca elders here with the request to show yourself some more of that maybe finer details of seeing up close and far away showing others as well who you truly are. Yeah, we're talking about connecting to, to connecting to a new community perhaps. This is not the end, you will you will love again. I feel like spirit is encouraging if this is you especially you're in a place where you feel maybe something is lost, you won't experience the warmth of love again like I said. There's an encouragement to continue to put yourself out there, not to flay yourself open, especially if you're still, you know, raw on something, but to not forget that we do heal. We heal in sacred spaces on our own, and we heal by connecting with others too, being authentic and opening up and, and being vulnerable, being willing to make those connections, especially when it's scary. And trust you me. <laughs> This absolutely applies to my life as well. Okay, any other um, or archetype cards here? You want two of these, okay. Then we'll pull some tarot cards. Tarot cards here as well. What else is going on here for this collective message? Please, Spirit. Whoa. The Nectar and the Mystic come through here. Nectar and Mystic. So the Nectar, this is what I feel, this is an energy that's coming from your sacred space in the ether. The Nectar is this energy that comes from the ether down through our crown chakra to nourish the rest of our system. If you're not taking the time, okay, if you're not taking the time right now, to meditate, to establish a sacred space, to go to your sacred space where you feel peace and safety, you're not receiving this infusion of this golden, delicious nectar. The nectar I'm drawn to, and the, the book talks about Shiva. The story goes that Shiva 
consumed the poison of a snake to save the world, transmuted it in their throat into this nectar. This process of transmutation, I'm seeing those concentric rings swinging around again. Whatever darkness, negativity, sadness, separation, feelings of separation that you may be experiencing right now can be transmuted, is wanting to be transmuted here into this delicious nectar, but it requires that you're tapping into this etheric sacred space, okay? And with the mystic coming through here as well. As above, so below is standing out, but it's not really... Because typically it's like as within, so without. Um, I mean, as without, so within as well. But our worlds start in here. This feels more like... That nectar in the etheric realms here... You want to look at it like a download, an energetic upgrade. This is asking to come into your experience here to bring you closer to its vibration. Interesting. Maybe you are a mystic. Maybe you are a seer. We do all have psychic abilities. Every single one of us. There are varying degrees, obviously, of maybe skill or, or ability. Somebody's also trained too, but please don't forget you guys are very powerful as well. And it's important that you remember double mission here and whale and orca elders. You remember that you do have that quality inside of you. There's something in the book that is wanting to be seen. One second. The seeker, the light worker, there's the light worker again, the dreamer. Um, remover of darkness, visionary and ageless when in dark expects results, seeks attention and recognition. Okay. So yeah, I was like, I was saying, I feel like this is, is wanting to bring that nectar down to you that, um, remover of darkness, the etheric realms the work, the light workers in the etheric realms are wanting to give you access to this transmuted darkness, this nectar. This requires that you find a sacred space to be able to ingest that. Okay, you guys. Cool. Interesting. All right. So, Spirit, which tarot deck are we starting with here? You want to do Light Seer's Tarot. All right. So, I did do a freestyle reading last week and it was a lot of fun um so i'm gonna do it again all right so spirit can we get a little bit further into this message for the collective my beautiful collective friends what is the purpose or function of this message i'm hearing to ignite mm -hmm. to ignite sorry if you can hear that <laughs> squealing car To ignite, to ignite what? Six of cups and six of wands in reverse come out here. I feel like I am drawn to your double mission here with the six of wands in reverse. There is this recognition, um, and this was in the mystic in the shadow side, that seeking recognition. That is more of the shadow side of this, though, being in the reverse, this is the shadow side of the light seer here. So I do feel redirection, reigniting your purpose here. Like you're, I'm seeing a flashing line, uh, uh, sign, excuse me, like you would see in Vegas or an in and out burger. I don't know. <laughs> um, to help redirect you to where you intended to go in the first place. I do feel like there may be a little bit of an over connection or obsession with physical recognition. This, especially in this deck here, it's um, it can symbolize a, a social media influencer. Not that there is anything wrong with that. I'm literally here doing that right now. It's the over attachment to maybe the way that something plays out. 
over attachment to views, subscribers, friends, likes, that is pulling you further away from being able to receive this nectar. The six of cups here, I feel like this is your nectar. This is a gift from your inner child. When the world was young, that came through in meditation. Your elegance. Okay, let's go a little further into that. What is this gift? What is the gift here? You, obviously, right? Um, Page of Cups here comes through, and then the world in reverse also fell out. I feel like somebody, somebody is aware of their gifts. As an example, I know for me, um, things are definitely activating a lot more again recently, and I knew this would happen. But when I was a kid, there were a lot of, a lot of shit was going down, and it terrified me. And because I didn't have the right support or knowledge on what was going on, I shut it down. That's kind of what I'm feeling. Someone here had a similar experience, this closing here shutting something down that um, those sacred geometry shapes reminds me a lot of interdimensional travel or multiple multi multi dimensions, excuse me. Your heavenly your etheric self, this is this is where we have our abilities. That's where they come from. So this makes sense, you're being requested to establish and connect with your sacred space here, to be able to connect deeper with well, your song, your, your frequency your gifts what you came here to us to do um on your double mission outside of being human the page of cups here this is something what i'm getting from this is um so they've got a little piglet here when pigs fly so this idea of like like when hell freezes over there's um oh and there's that just like a ghost hand making making a heart here as well. You will love again. This is, it feels like an echo from the past. So we're, we're connecting to whatever this feeling of lost love is or came from. But these gifts that were shut down that you're being asked to tap back into again, your frequency, there's this feeling of um, like, well, when hell freezes over, right? When pigs fly, am I going to be able to do that again? Or am I going to connect to that again? Or I'm going to feel love again. I'm getting interest. I'm getting this vibe of I'm I'm pulled to the recognition. Like I said, it's like there is this behavior of of trying to fill to fill a well with the wrong liquid is what I'm hearing. Because this space was opened up, this loss of whatever you had access to as a child. You're working to fill that space with something. It, you're putting <laughs> you're putting a round peg in a square hole, right? Or a square peg in a round hole. The only thing that will fill that hole is the correct shape. Your, the gift, your gifts. Not food, not media, not recognition, not views, not subscribers, right? Okay. Thank you, Spirit. Can we go a little bit further into this? What um, what do they do about this? What do they need to know about this? Page of Swords here in reverse. And the Fool here at the bottom in reverse, too. I feel that there's this fear here to trust. Like, back to um, Whale and Orca Elders. Opening up, showing others who you actually are, allowing others to see you too, making these connections, having real relationships. With um, the fool here in reverse, that's what I'm getting. There's this fear of feeling the fool. Page of Swords here in reverse as well. I am very much getting this vibe. Uh, you're looking around you at other people. This can symbolize spying. You're comparing yourself. There's this process of comparison that's going on to the wrong thing. 
the only comparison, yeah, comparison that that is healthy to make is where you are now to maybe where you've come from, how much you've grown, okay? Because even even comparing where you are now to where you want to be or where you're going is only going to provide stress, distress, frustration, confusion. So there's an encouragement to stop worrying about what other people are doing around you because it's not a it's not about what other people are doing around you. As you're opening up being your authentic self, working to tap into this beautiful nectar, the elegance of that nectar and your true self coming through your sacred space, you are you are allowing others safe space to do that too, first and foremost. But it's also helping, it will also help cull any other connections that maybe are not feeding you in the way that you need to be fed right now. Okay. Any other advice on that real quick here, Spirit? Evaluate. Evaluation, feed out what doesn't serve you, reevaluate the situation. Yes. So instead of looking around you at what others may be doing and comparing yourself to that, like I said, reevaluating here, looking inside yourself and evaluating what it is that you want to be there or don't want to be there. Making space for this nectar. Hmm. I'm seeing like a, a mantle uh, on a fireplace moving your brick or brack, making space for this trophy that is this nectar. That's the right, ooh, that's the recognition that you're seeking. This feeling of completion that comes from the inside, not the outside. I know these sound like very basic things, but we need these reminders sometimes. God knows I do. Okay. Um, you do want to stick with this deck. What do we want to ask here? How does how does player A <laughs> how does this person receive this nectar? Ooh, nine of cups. Open up. They're leading with their heart here. This is making a wish, a wish come true. Uh, but leading with the heart, taking that leap. Leaving, this is interesting too, because they're on a treasure chest, leaving what you consider to be treasure here on this earthly plane, not saying that there's anything wrong with money or treasure, uh, but this person can't experience what it is that they truly are desiring, what their wish is, if they're standing on this pile of money, right? There's a whole world, universe, multi-dimensions to experience, and they have to leap from that towards what it is that they desire, what they wish. You have to want it. Okay, yeah, you have to want it. You have to want to receive that. The wheel here at the bottom as well. This energy is moving in this direction for you. Things are coming into a place where things are working out in your favor. But you have to want to experience that too. Things can change and um, be the perfect environment for us to experience wealth, abundance, peace, elegance. But if we're sitting in a corner, you know, we're not going to experience that energy. You get what I'm saying? You have to want it. You have to want to experience that as well. Okay, I feel like... Blue Angel Oracle I'm being drawn to here. Sadness. I'm going to read this in the book here because this has to do with love. <laughs> Sadness. Love. There may be sadness at present, but this is also a sacred time. There's your sacred space too. Reflect on that which really matters to you and cherish and treasure all that is meaningful in your life. In sorrow, there is also great beauty. For your sadness stems from a profound love built of precious memories that live forever in your heart and the hearts of those you love. 
Know that nothing truly ends for you and everyone you love are eternal. Life will continuously unfold, change, and transform, but it will never cease. Every ending is also a beginning in life's eternal wheel. And we have the wheel come through too. Life is one continuous cycle. All the events of your life and all those who play a role in it are a part of you forever. Life is an eternal spirit with no beginning or end. All is an ocean of light. There's your ocean too. <laughs> a great sea of love. All is one. We are one, my immortal beloved. I love that. So coming back to that message of this is not the end. It is eternal. We are eternal. We are eternal beings. Whatever's happened where there is this feeling of sadness connected to love, it's important to feel that too. This is a part of the human experience. But there's a strong request. This was important enough right now to give encouragement to who, whoever this message is for to not give up. Don't allow yourself to get stuck in this spot. Feel the feels always. But don't let the feels over, overpower you and keep you down. You have too much, you have too much stuff to do here, right? Right. Um, sounds like they're starting construction out here. I feel like that's kind of a sign to wrap this up. Um, any final messages on that with sadness here, please, spirit? Hmm, I feel like there's another one here too. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Um, Ten of Cups here in reverse and the tower comes out. So I feel like we're just coming back to whatever, whatever ended. This was violent. This was, this was owie, definitely. The tower coming down here, it was both completely destructive at the time, even now, you may be still feeling that shockwave. But there's also an energy of freedom attached to this with the Ten of Cups in reverse. This is your happy family. Typically being in reverse here, this is this feeling of loss, feeling that you've lost the ability to have these kinds of connections with your community to love again. I feel like they're what's coming through is like the, the finality of a contract, a contract coming to a close. We can't force ourselves to continue on. Once a contract's done, whether this is a pet, a friend, romantic relationship, anything, our own experience here, once a contract's done, it's done. There's nothing that we can do to extend that. And I find, personally, that's one of the more difficult things to accept here as a human being. I, you know, in earlier this year in April, I had to say goodbye to my little, my little buddy Hermes, my little dog, my heart. And what I felt, you know, was that was a permanent goodbye. It was very, it still is very difficult. And I have to remember that too. This was, this was a contract. And, um, I mean, get emotional here. Um, what I'm getting is it's important even when we're feeling those more difficult, sharp uh, pains surrounding that kind of loss, to also remember that it wouldn't be possible it wouldn't be possible to feel such pain if we didn't also at some point have the beautiful blessing of being able to feel the warmth of love that was connected to that. There's something in this message saying that there is a direct relationship to how bad this feels, to how much of a blessing it was in your life. And um, you're being asked to not forget that this hurts, but to remember that you had, you had this gem, you had this beautiful experience in your life. And that's what you're being asked to focus on right now to bring more of that vibration into your life, that nectar. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm not apologizing for crying. I'm just trying to compose. 
Are there any other cards you'd like me to pull here, Spirit? No. Okay. Y'all, <laughs> I love you. You are loved. You are love. Please don't forget that. I am sorry for the pain. This is the price we paid to, to take this ride, right? Don't forget that love is coming again. As soon as one door closes, one door opens, right? As cliche as that sounds. I'm feeling what's coming through is if you can't see where the next door is to follow the flow, whether that you want to look at this as water or air, feel out for where there is movement and move towards the movement. Don't allow yourself, thank goodness, do not allow yourself to remain stagnant. Stagnancy is death and we are not here to die eventually, but there's so much life to live in the meantime. Okay. I love you collective. Please take care of yourselves and I'll see you all very soon. Okay. Be well.